Hi there, dear people. Welcome to this, uh, this video, this time of, of worship that we're having here at Fade Lutheran Church, Warradale. Today, it's the 3rd of April as we record this. Um, really great to welcome you to be a part of, of our life together here at Faith, wherever you are. Um, we're here in God's name, in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to read to you just a brief word from the psalm for today, Psalm 20. I pray that the Lord will listen when you're in trouble, that the God of Jacob will keep you safe. May the Lord send help from his temple and come to your rescue from Mount Zion. Um, we're going to um, have a little closer look at Psalm 20 today. It's a prayer for victory for the king. But it's also, and you'll hear this later on in the psalm, it's also a confession, a confession of the king's trust that he places in his God, our God. We'll also move from King David to King Jesus. And this is likewise a prayer for him. But the outcome of this prayer is very different. So the Lord bless you as you listen and reflect on the word today. Um, we're really pleased that I'm able to share this with you. Psalm for today is Psalm 20 and it's a prayer for victory. I pray that the Lord will listen when you are in trouble and that the God of Jacob will keep you safe. May the Lord send help from his temple and come to your rescue from Mount Zion. May he remember your gifts and be pleased with what you bring. May God do what you want most and let all go well for you. Then you will win victories and we will celebrate while raising our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord answer all of your prayers. I am certain, Lord, that you will help your chosen king. You will answer my prayers from your holy place in heaven and you will save me with your mighty arm. Some people trust the power of chariots or horses, but we trust you, Lord God. Others will stumble and fall, but we will be strong and stand firm. Give the king victory, Lord, and answer our prayers. This is a word from the Lord for us today. Jesus is nailed to a cross. As Jesus was being led away, some soldiers grabbed hold of a man named Simon who was from Cyrene. He was coming in from the fields, but they put it on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd was following Jesus, and in the crowd a lot of women were white and offer him. Jesus turned to the women and said, Women of Jerusalem, don't cry for me. Cry for yourselves and for your children. Someday people will say, women who never had children are really fortunate. At that time everyone will say to the mountains, fall on us. They will say to the hills, hide us. If this can happen when the wood is green, what do you think will happen when it is dry? Two criminals were led out to be put to death with Jesus. When the soldiers came to the place called the skull, they nailed Jesus to a cross. They also nailed the two criminals to crosses, one on each side of Jesus. Jesus said, Father, forgive these people. They don't know what they are doing. While the crowd stood there watching Jesus, the soldiers gambled for his clothes. The leaders insulted him by saying, he saved others. Now he should save himself, if he really is God's chosen Messiah. The soldiers made fun of Jesus and brought him some wine. They said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him was a sign that said, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging there also insulted Jesus by saying, Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and save us. But the other criminal told the first one off, Don't you fear God? Aren't you getting the same punishment as this man? We got what was coming to us, but he didn't do anything wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into power. Jesus replied, I promise that today you will be with me in paradise. The death of Jesus. Around noon the sky turned dark and stayed that way until the middle of the afternoon. The sun stopped shining, and the curtain in the temple split down the middle. 
Jesus shouted, Father, I put myself in your hands. Then he died. When the Roman officer saw what had happened, he praised God and said, Jesus must really have been a good man. A crowd had gathered to see the terrible sight. Then after they had seen it, they felt broken hearted and went home. All of Jesus' close friends and the women who had come with him from Galilee stood at a distance and watched. But God says pray, pray for all people. And finally, like we pray in the Lord's Prayer and all these different things happening in life, it's Lord, whatever we think, finally it's what you want, your will be done. But he does want us to keep praying and God knows there's so many things that we should pray for. For God to have mercy on, for God to, to, to shift people's hearts and minds into a much better place into a more God-pleasing place. So let's pray for the little kids. Lord, you want these little ones to grow up to have the victory that Jesus won for them. You want them to grow up knowing that they're safe and saved. So Lord, grant that we adults and parents and godparents um, and friends would keep praying for the little ones, that they would have the final victory along with Jesus and live with you in your kingdom when that time comes forever and ever. Lord, yours is the victory that really counts and we pray that that blessing of victory would overflow on all of your faithful people from the little ones up. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I want to talk on. The um, text is itself is a prayer. Now, I've got control of this here. Oh, there it was. Some people trust the power of chariots or horses, but we trust you, Lord God. Others will stumble and fall, but we will be strong and stand firm. Give the king victory, Lord, and answer our prayers. We will pray that at the end of our teaching time today, God willing, with, with open hearts. But first, may I bless you. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll pray. Dear Lord, as we consider your word in front of us today, prompt and inspire our thinking with your Holy Spirit. Refresh and encourage us in your word. Inject your love into us as we pray for all people and as we confess our faith and our trust in you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So here's another question. When was the last time you prayed for our Prime Minister? Putting you on the spot there. Not wanting to necessarily mess with your minds. Or, or prayed for your neighbours? i to ask myself the same question. When was the last time... It's an appropriate um, question for all of us, myself included, who consider ourselves as God's people. It's a good question and it's a reminder to us that prayer for our leaders and for each other, indeed for all people, in God's kingdom, it's not an optional extra, it's a command of the Lord himself, it comes through his word. We hear it uh, where God speaks to us in... Um, the letter of Timothy, the first letter of Timothy, and this is what he says. Now, I'm sorry that we've got purple on purple there. I hope it's readable up this end, probably that screen. And there you go, in purple and purple, black and white. First of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and for all who are in high authority, that we may lead. Did you get that? praying for kings, that we may lead peaceful lives. So we're praying for the kings for our sake in a way, praying for the kings and all in authority that we may lead peaceful, quiet, godly lives, dignified in every way. So if we're going to pray for our Prime Minister, 
for argument's sake, what would we pray? If we're going to pray for people in authority, the reality is we might even be praying for opposite things. So if we think of praying for our Prime Minister, I'm sure that in Australia today, some people would be earnestly praying, Lord, give Prime Minister um, success and victory at the upcoming federal election. And just as surely there'll be another group of people that are praying, Lord, um, after the election, give the Prime Minister lots and lots of quality family time with his family and friends. Two different prayers, aren't they? (laughs) And that's the reality. So what might we pray for? Psalm 20 is a prayer for Israel's king. It gives us some pointers as to what we might pray for our local king equivalents. And here's the prayer. It comes in two parts. And the first part is a direct prayer for the king. And the second part is a confession, the confession of faith. So here's the prayer. I pray that the Lord will listen when you're in trouble, that the God of Jacob will keep you safe. Uh, May the Lord send help from his temple, come to your rescue from Mount Zion. So they're the basically the basic prayers, that he remembers your gifts, he's pleased with what you bring, that God will do what you want him to do. Hmm, that's a good one. And then you'll win victories and we will all celebrate raising our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord answer all of your prayers. So that's clearly a prayer to God for victory. The second part of the psalm, and well look, if we look at this first part, if, if we're praying that, if King David is having that prayed for him, what's the reality that he's facing? There's probably trouble of put. He's probably in deep brown runny stuff. He's probably on a river without a paddle. He's probably skating on thin ice. or oh, the ground is shaking underneath him. He's quivering in his boots, all these sort of things. He's afraid. He's frightened of what might happen. He's afraid for his life. And so that's why a prayer like that is so important. That tells us a little bit about him. But even though he might be this this quivering king, he's also a king who puts his faith in the Lord. And so this second part of the psalm is is a prayer of confession. It's, It's basically saying, Lord, I know that you are king over all things. Lord, I I know that you will help your chosen king. You will answer my prayers from your holy place in heaven and you'll save me. So this is a strong and a bold confession of faith. So he starts with this, here I am Lord in deep, deep, um, deep trouble on shaky ground, but I know that you are my rock and that I can trust in you. So you're the one I'm turning to when I'm in a troubled place. This is a good psalm, I think. I'm trusting you in your goodness, whatever happens. Now from this king, we move to another king. King Jesus. And he too is standing on shaky ground, literally shaking at one point in his dying. The judgment has taken place. He's led away to the killing field, to Golgotha. I reckon that's an onomatopoeic word. It sounds sounds a bit like a death place, Golgotha, the place of the skull. That's where he's sent to be crucified, to die, led away. He's tortured, persecuted, nailed to the cross, hung up to die. King Jesus... And who would pray for him? Who would pray that the Lord would listen? Listen to Jesus when he's in trouble. Who would pray that the Lord God of Jacob would come from Zion and rescue him and and keep him safe? Who would pray that for Jesus, King Jesus, as he's dying? We didn't hear that prayer there, did we? Maybe the women and the people who knew and loved him were praying for him. Maybe they were just too overwhelmed with grief. 
Instead, ironically, he's the one that's doing the caring. He's the one that's doing the praying. While he's dying, for these people around him, for you and me, he's praying for them. Knowing that his death will overcome death. As he's being led away, he's calling out, concerned for other people. Women of Jerusalem, don't cry for me. Cry for yourselves and for your children. And there, as he's dying, the criminal has called out to him and and Jesus is calling it back to him. I promise that today you'll be with me in paradise. And as he dies... He prays to the Father. You know what he prays? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't realise it. And so he dies. And the earth shakes. The darkness moves in. The temple curtain is split in two. And he cries, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. God's great saving work is done. No victory banners though. No cheers. Only tears. As people turned away. Facing the other way. And went their own way. Did they realise, do we realise just what happened there? I wonder sometimes whether the enormity of what God did for us in Jesus on that cross is something that for us in our modern, comfortable, Christian lifestyle, it's just, yep, it's a given. Thank you, Jesus. Do we understand the pain, the suffering, the dying, that he died for us, for you, For me, he who had no sin, as we heard last Sunday, becoming sin for us, dying in our place. You see, it took a death to overcome death. But not just to overcome death, but also all the powers of darkness and sin. And while God provides human kings, queens, prime ministers and other leaders to provide for us and to protect us from our worldly enemies, they cannot overcome, they cannot overcome our true enemies, sin, death and the devil. No matter the next Prime Minister, who he is or who he will be, none of them can deliver us from our true enemies. But sin, death and hell were overthrown by King Jesus' death for us. On that cross, he took our sin on his shoulders He conquered death by his death and he reigns victorious over all. Thanks be to God who gives us, who gives us this victory for Jesus' sake. Well, might we ask, where is its victory? Where is its sting? It's gone. The victory is ours. Death no longer is the winner. Sin no longer is the winner. Jesus, King Jesus, has overcome. And in that, we have this great assurance that nothing at all in all creation can actually separate us from God, not even the last enemy, which is death. God says, because of Christ's resurrection, we have hope. Think of the worst thing that could ever happen to you. Think about it. Do you ever wonder about the, what's the worst thing that could ever happen to you? Think about it and know this, that the death of King Jesus has overcome that and puts that away. And we have victory with Jesus for Jesus' sake. So let this truth seep deep into your soul. This question asks, who shall separate us? Is there anything at all that can separate us from the love of God? Can anything separate you from the love of God? No, 
Nothing. We know what we deserve, don't we? I think I know. <laughs> we know what we deserve by the way we live. But remember, nothing can separate us from God's love, so God's love overcomes. And that's a free gift of God. Eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now this word is not just for us, but it's for people that don't know Jesus. We are people who benefit from his death. We know the benefits. We know the victory of death and sin that he's won for us. And we know and we can and we will stand strong and firm, even on shaky ground or thin ice. And even in our human condition, as we struggle and stumble about, still impacted by sin and its consequences, victory is ours. And we can boldly, like Jesus, say, Father, into your hands I commit myself, Lord. My life is in your hands because the victory that he has won for us is ours. We hold on to that. And one day, you and I, dear brothers and sisters, one day we will all stand together with all creation in the presence of King Jesus on his throne and there we will meet our victorious King and Saviour and friend, Jesus. And we'll see him face to face. We who have placed our faith in him whose faith is a living and active faith, will be received into his kingdom with thanksgiving and joy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we don't trust in human power and earthly strength. It's there, it's a part of our lives, but we don't put our ultimate trust in it. We trust in the mighty power and the victory of Jesus. And he listens to us. He's the one who listens to us when we're in trouble He's the one who comes to our rescue. He's the one who ultimately keeps us safe. He's overcome sin, death and the grave for us so that we might live with him into eternity and ultimately celebrate with him and his kingdom. Wow, that's God's gift of life and love to us and indeed to the whole world. We know it. Who can we share it with? And how might we do that? That's a question that you might get answered on Saturday or at least along the way, something to learn. But I want to invite you now to join with me in the King's Prayer. Pray for yourselves, pray for others as we pray this prayer together. Some people trust the power of chariots or horses but we trust you, Lord God. Others will stumble and fall, but we will be strong and stand firm. Give the king victory, Lord, and answer our prayers. Amen. And now may the peace of God that is deeper, way deeper than all our human understanding, keep all of our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I don't know what this week will hold for you, but perhaps this week we're heading to Palm Sunday, the, the triumphant victory parade into Jerusalem. Maybe this week you'll reflect on, uh, maybe it's a good opportunity to reflect on trust. Where do you place your trust? What can you rely on for your daily life, for safety and provision? Consider if there are things in your life that you're placing an un unnecessary trust on, you might shift your trust from that thing or that object or that person and place it on Jesus. Just something to think and pray and reflect on day by day. All right.
is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. In Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. seems to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless stand before the throne, faultless stand Thank you so much for sharing this time of worship with us at Faith Warradale. I certainly hope and pray that it's been a blessing to you. Don't ever forget that the victory has been won. And uh, because of what Jesus has won in that victory, we too are victors. And, and we can live lives with confidence in that victory for us because Jesus has, has defeated the devil and sin and darkness and death. And when we place our hope and trust in him, well, we know that we live, that our lives are safe in him. So I want to send you out now with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Now and always. Amen. Bye for now. Here I stand, holy and wrong.
When you lay down your life 